on Crick Buzz in conversation today. I'm, I'm, I'm with somebody I've wanted to talk cricket with for a long time. I've had the opportunity a few times and I've always emerged a little more knowledgeable when I speak to Tom Moody, who combines, by the way, the two qualities that not everybody has, height and stature. Both. Some have height, but not the stature. <laughs> Tom Moody has got height and stature both. And yet, here's a trivia thing for you, Tom, six foot six and not the tallest in your house. No, well, it's still debatable, Harsha, and it's nice to speak to you as well. Um, my son is, I'm, I'm calling it, he's exactly the same height as me, but if you talk to him, he'll probably say he's got a millimetre on me. Uh, so you're, you're 199, so he just tips the scale at two, you think? No, I, I'm actually two. I'm recorded at, I, I think, on Wikipedia or one of those uh, online uh, sites as one night. I'm exactly two, uh, 200, and I think he's probably about, or he's claiming he's about 200 and a half. It, 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 it doesn't matter. That's stratospheric for people like us. So that <laughs> doesn't matter. I mean, with all those wisdoms at the back, do you also have room for a hat track? Because you've worn so many <laughs> over the years. Director of cricket, captain, coach, mentor, all these things that you've been over the years. Yeah. Oh, look, I, I consider it as a privilege more than anything else, Harsha, that yeah. you know, I've had the opportunity and hope that I continue to have the opportunity yeah. to play you know, many roles and wear many hats because it's it's something that runs through my veins. You know, the game runs through my veins like I know it does with you and many others. Um, and to be able to, to play different roles within the game, I find fascinating. Yeah. Uh, you're constantly learning. You know, in the commentary box around the people like yourself and whoever it might be that is on uh, the roster that day, I, I, I consider it as a great learning opportunity. You know, I don't go in there as the expert, I go in there hoping that I'm going to pick up a bit of gold dust from someone else just in conversation. So being involved from a, a coaching, administrative and a commentary point of view, I, I find it a, a fascinating way to, to remain current um, and, and also constantly push myself to learn about the game. And, and yet in your role as a coach, you're the one who's imparting wisdom, taking, taking decisions and we'll talk, uh, tell the story of Tom Moody as coach through a series of pictures and inevitably, I mean, we're largely in India, Tom. So we'll start with a team that you're most closely identified with. And that, of course, is the Sunrisers. You coach them, what, seven years? Uh, yeah. You, I mean, I, I, I imagine you and I don't imagine a baggy green. I don't imagine the yellow and uh, the green and gold. I imagine the orange of, of, of the Sunrisers. What was it like building that franchise? You, you're, you're a coach that's coming in, a franchise that in another avatar has, has won an IPL, but it's really in turmoil. How do you start building a franchise? Yeah, look, it was, it was a fascinating opportunity, um, which came about really through a phone call from Matai Murali Duran. Um, I was in South Africa at the time. He called me out the blue and said, look, would you be interested in getting back involved in, in coaching? And, you know, at first I was a little bit hesitant, but then when I thought through it, the adrenaline started to rush and I thought, well, this is where I belong. I'm passionate about coaching. So to pick up the the list that uh, Deccan Chargers had left after trading Rohit Sharma to Mumbai Indians and you know, there was all sorts of things happening behind the scenes, as you well know, um, it, in a way was probably uh, not a bad thing uh, in the sense that it, it, it enabled me to start from scratch. You know, mm. I didn't have an established side. I didn't have uh, any major superstars, even though we, we had Shika Darwin. Uh, but Shika was at that stage just starting to flex his muscles, you know, on the international stage. He certainly wasn't established as he is now. Um, so you, you start by building Firstly, the personnel around the domestic mm. personnel. Um, and that's the hardest thing. Uh, international players, there's there, there's many options that you can turn to. But, you know, the, the key, I believe, to one of the keys to a successful IPL franchise is the depth of quality of your domestic players. And that is that's improved dramatically over the years in India because I think the IPL has been a wonderful platform for players to develop their game um, but that was that was primarily mm. the, the the target for the first three years is to de develop 
um, those those players, identify those domestic players, and then identify a brand of cricket that we wanted to play that was suited to the home ga- uh, home ground in Hyderabad. So what is it we want to, how do we believe that we can win more than lose at home and also be robust enough on the road to be able to have the options to, to, um, to be effective away from home in different conditions? What, what do mentors do? You had, you had a Murali, you had Lakshman, both mm. at heart decent human beings, uh, soft-spoken, modest, but how much, what, what is their role? There's this strange new creature in the world of cricket called a mentor. So how, how did the three of you work together? Very well, um, because we were very good friends, firstly. Uh, we had huge respect for each other. Um, and we all brought different things. You know, from a coaching perspective, I'm forever grateful to both of those guys because they trusted me as coach. They trusted my judgment. They would give me information through their incredible experience and whether I took that information or advice and followed through with it or not, there was never a second question of it. So we were very close with regards to how we understood each other and very different, you know, like Laxman, for instance, as as we know, he's, he's such a gentleman, you know, such a beautiful man. Um, but he he's he's so highly regarded and quite rightly so. So his impact on the Indian players was profound. Mm. You know, they would listen to every single word that Laxman would you know that would mutter. And he also found himself playing an important role, whether he asked for it or not, with the overseas players because they saw him as a real source of information. They clearly admired him as one of India's greats, and they wanted to learn from him. So he he became a you know a, a very important person with regards to that. Murli, he's like the fire starter. You know he he is full of energy, as you know, and he, he's got incredible insight of the game, and incredible passion for the game, and you know he he just adds so much energy. And, and creates that positive environment. And he's quite happy to be the center of the laugh, uh, which fascinated a lot of the young players. Yeah. They thought, my God, you know, how can, this is Matari Murli Durham, but he's happy to be the one that's wearing the chocolate cake on the face or whatever the case yeah. might be. Then you've got your lead batsman at the time, who blows hot, blows cold. Uh, at, at that time, he was reverent sometimes, he was hated sometimes. Uh, David Warner was this was this very uh, polarizing figure. And mm. yet, the Warner of Australia and the Warner of Sunrisers could have been twins growing up in different continents. How yeah, do you look, manage somebody like that? And you actually made him captain. Yeah, which, which surprised a lot of people at the time, but I suppose when we secured Davey in the auction and it was, it was to be truthful, it was by uh, chance that we got him because we were expecting Delhi to use the right to match mm. uh, card, which they, which they failed to do. So obviously they ran out of patience with regards to um, his maturity as a, as a player and as a person where I assured our owners and our management that you know, trust me. I, you know, I, I feel that I can, I can work and 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 get the very best out of Davy because he's a superstar. Um, and as soon as he put orange on, he didn't really look back. Mm. Um, when it comes to the leadership, I think a lot of people don't understand uh, with David Warner is that he's a very astute thinker of the game. They just mm. sort of see him as this person that just bangs the ball out of the ground and intimidates. Uh, the opposition, and you know, it can be a little bit chirpy. Uh, certainly, the old Dave Warner uh, can be a bit chirpy. Um, but the, the, the bottom line is that there was this real drive inside him, which I knew that he wanted to take mm-hmm. on leadership, and he had the tools, as in he had the skill. And from a coaching point of view, uh, your role, in my view, is that you just fill the spaces that 
whoever the leader may be, that he may be falling short in. So I mm -hmm. knew that I could cover the areas that maybe he might be slightly weak or developing in. And there's certain things that he could do out in the middle that very few could do. So, you know, I, I sort of uh, backed it and thankfully had the backing of, uh, you know, uh, Murali and Laxman, the two mentors, and obviously the management at the time. We actually had did a similar program with David Warner and we asked him about being reverend and he, he spoke with great warmth about growing as a person. I mean, he's, he's seen more life, more about life than so many have. So it, it's interesting that he talked about that and what captaincy meant to him. And yet here you are, he's, he's led you to a title in 2016. He's giving you five, 600 runs every season. One season, he gives you 800 runs. That's a ridiculous number of runs for an IPL mm -hmm. tournament. Suddenly he's not available. And you go from David Warner to Kane Williamson. So you say, here's all the qualities Warner has, here's all the qualities Williamson has, has and never the twain shall meet. Yeah, and you like, went with Williamson as captain. Yeah, very interesting because they're polar opposites, aren't they? Yeah. Um, and and I suppose the the, the planning that was put in place um, a few a few years earlier had come to the fore with Williamson because we we recognised Williamson was not only a wonderful, exciting player when we first secured him in the auction, um, but we knew that he was a high quality individual and we also knew that he was a well-equipped leader. Even though reasonably early on in his leadership, we knew that we had we had secured in the auction a very, very good leader. So not that we were expecting the captain to fall over or to a point came Williamson three years down the track as a captain. But what we did do is we had planned to make sure that we had good leadership quality within our squad. So when that transition happened, it it was an easier transition than trying to secure a captain that had very little experience or had very little respect of the dressing room. Kane Williamson took the cap as captain and the respect in the dressing room didn't waver. If anything, it, it rose because he's such a popular individual. And of course, he gave you 700 runs and showed that he can be a, he, he can be a T20 player as well. That 2016 campaign, where does it sit for you in, in, in your life? There's two World Cups, there's mm. two Test Hundreds, but winning an IPL, there's a 2007 World Cup final with Sri Lanka, but IPL 2016? Very precious, very precious indeed. Um, you know, it's a humbling experience to be involved in a campaign like that because we all know how hard it is to win major tournaments um, and to be part of that journey and, and, and play a, 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 a small role in helping that sort of realise is uh, something I treasure very highly. I think World Cups obviously are untouchable. Uh, personal milestones, you know, I struggle to remember them. Uh, it's really the team things that uh, I hold close to my heart. So those sort of team efforts, both with the off-field team, support team and the players are very, very special. I'm going to come to Ben Cutting in a moment because uh, mm. even today, if you go to RCB and say, who's your most hated player number one of all the people, they're <laughs> going to say Ben Cutting. Tell us about that find. There's, Yuvrat Singh has played a crucial role. He's got a crucial 30. But mm. that innings by Ben Cutting, is there a role in T20 for a 20-ball batsman? Really, that's how you were using Ben Cutting, isn't it? Go out, 15 balls, mm. 20 balls, and take the game away. Yeah, I'd even take that down to 10 balls. Uh, yeah. I think there is a absolutely a role. Uh, well, on average, you're number seven in T20 cricket. On average, they would face about nine balls mm. on average over a, over a tournament. So. If you can perfect your skill from anything between that range of 10 to 20 and, and double you, the, 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 the score, as in if you're facing 10 balls, you get 20 runs plus, you become a, a brilliant finisher. You become someone that puts that cherry on the cake when it comes to that first innings total. Oh, I thought we're only going to get 160, but we got 170. And that one, the difference psychologically with that 10 runs, but also the difference in, in how the game is played because you've got that extra 10 runs, it's like an additional over. Interestingly, 
in a very batting driven format the sunrisers were probably the first franchise in the IPL to say that we can make bowling our a primary strength it's not that the batting was weak but the bowling was uh, was in many ways a primary strength led by bhuvi who and bhuvneshwar had a couple of outstanding years interestingly you packed your side with indian bowlers and that traditionally is something that indian franchises look overseas for so talk talk, talk us through that that uh, bhuvneshwar leading a largely indian bowling lineup yeah and he did it so beautifully well and he'll, i'm sure will continue to do it uh, well uh, look we just felt that uh, the bench strength was important with regards to bowling uh, bowling is not the easiest art to uh, to be consistent with both physically and 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 skill wise and particularly in the in the the pressure cooker of t20 cricket so we wanted to have uh, a number of options uh, at hand that we can that we can work with um the the obvious targets the the high profile indian bowlers were m- more you know often taken and mm. and locked down in various franchises so we felt that if we had a a, a number of next rung bowlers that were on the verge of just sort of you know announcing themselves as possible international targets um we felt that uh, we could help develop those bowlers and during that process we would benefit as a franchise by them delivering and being you know consistent for us um so the other aspect to your question about you know being bowling strong i've always had a philosophy around that if you can own your 120 balls in the field and that mm-hmm. is have a good fielding unit plus have those 120 balls well managed with a very diverse attack and the flexibility with that attack both on the field or options going into games um i always feel that you create enormous amount of pressure on your opponent uh, and i think the difference between a quality death bowler against a quality finisher i think there's more finishers out there than there are quality finishers with the ball mm. so it's a bit of a supply and demand situation now an australian accent a slightly distant figure you've got siddharth kohl you've got sandeep sharma you've got basil thumpy you've got khalil ahmed is communication an issue i mean bhuvi had played international cricket uh, is, is is fine with his communication with leader of the mm-hmm. attack so how much of the leader of the attack was bhuvneshwar and how much of it was you seeking to communicate to people who may not always pick your accent or your vocabulary yeah uh look having had the experience with sri lanka in the early mm-hmm. parts of my coaching career i learned very quickly the communication uh was you know so important with regards to the message you deliver and whether it's understood and i'll give you a brief story on on that sri lankan experience and i this is a very young lasith malinga we're talking about back in 2005 i remember having all these one on one discussions with all the players around their roles and how we're looking to develop them and thinking that i'm doing all the right things and i remember about it would have been uh about 4 months into these robust discussions you know week in week out mahela jail wardner came up and said to me hey, listen coach what you're doing is brilliant with these one on one stuff but just just with the uh, malinga he hasn't understood one word that you've said <laughs> <laughs> but you know what it's like that you know that the sri lankans and the indians for that matter are so polite and you just get this sort of you know and i'm thinking oh I'm, you know the message is getting through but you know it was an important lesson for me very early on so when it comes to coaching uh in that situation i've quite often used someone when I, when i know and there is a player that has hasn't got the confidence with english uh, i've used a local player to help support me with the messaging because um you know the last thing you want to do is alienate that player and make them feel that they don't belong because they more than belong they are absolutely yeah. critical to the fabric of the side is that how you handle the fizz is that how you handle mustafa fizz yeah because the story is that you actually had someone who spoke bengali with him mm. all the time yeah is that true? well ricky ricky boye uh was was with us during that period of time and he he could communicate with fizz and 
he was very important to us with regards to getting those messages across. And the thing is with someone like Fizz, you, you, you may have a conversation with a player that speaks fluent English that will go for three minutes, but with someone like Fizz, your messaging is 10 seconds long. So you keep it very simple, very precise, make sure he there's no complications and he under he understands it. And Ricky was important in that. Um, otherwise, you know, it was, it was, uh, you know, an impossible situation for the player and an impossible situation for the team. Now, a couple of things about, about that stint with some of the decision making at, uh, at, at the Sunrisers. So, obviously, getting Fizz was, was, was a big thing. Then going out on a limb and getting Rashid and Nabi from, from Afghanistan. <laughs> I mean, R Rashid, when you got him, wasn't the Rashid Khan that we know him now. So, what is the thinking behind going out and getting a Rashid and, and a Nabi? Well, I was very keen to get a wrist spinner. I knew that, you know, that wrist spinners were clearly having an impact in the game. Uh, bowlers that could spin the ball both ways, whether it be wrist spinners or whether it be um, finger spinners that have got the doosera. Um, so I spoke to um, our analyst, uh, Srini, who was very close with me um, during my stint and said to him, look domestically and look internationally and just try to find a number of spinners that can give us this option for us to explore. So over a period of time, we, we both sort of looked and went through video after video of various options. And then I saw this rush of Khan ball. And I then said to Srini, keep sending videos, keep sending videos. I need to, you know, have an understanding of what this guy is doing because clearly no one else does, particularly the ones that have got the, the bat in their hand. And I, I sort of made the recommendation on the basis that one, the pacey bowled, two, the consistency he landed the yes. ball. Okay, the opposition at the time he was bowling to, you could argue was not IPL standard uh, or you know top level international standard, but what he was doing, he was doing incredibly consistently. So I felt that it was a gamble worth taking purely on the basis that the only obstacle we had to face was whether he was going to be overawed by an IPL occasion mm. and the big stage. But Rashid Khan turned out to be someone that would welcome, you know, that atmosphere and, and that pressure. And uh, the rest is history. Tell us, is, is, is there a story that, or an anecdote, or an, or, or an occasion that told you this kid belongs here? Is there, was there a challenge you threw at him? Just say, you know what, I think he belongs. Yeah, I, I can probably put that down to the very first net session we had in our camp before the, the, the first season that he played. Um, there was a few question marks around whether he can bowl um, or wh whether, you know, a, a kid from nowhere can suddenly step up mm -hmm. and one, command the attention he did in the auction, but two, deliver on the big stage. So I got a couple of our senior players, including David Warner, uh, to face him mm. and within 20 minutes I realized we picked a gem because his level of competitiveness in that in that net scenario was to me right this kid's ready to go he, he's he, he's not worried who he's bowling to he's delivering it so consistently no one understood what he was doing they couldn't work out which way he was turning it so he just ticked every box in that first training session and he just went from strength to strength because once you get the trust and the, the, the positive vibe back from your own environment, any player that is, it's a very powerful thing, Harsha. And he, mm. he had that in 20 minutes. You let go KL Rahul. Do you sometimes think, oops, what happened there? <laughs> yeah, look, absolutely. What a wonderful player. Um, mm. And we, we knew he was a good player because when we first got him from RCB as a young kid, um, Murali's the one that recommended him. Uh, and then we did our, did our homework and it was clearly, uh, you know, he was an exciting young talent. He was with us for a couple of years, had numerous opportunities, um, but really didn't nail it down. And certainly looking back, oh gosh, you know, sunrises with KL in the side would be would be you know magnificent. But the, the the realistic situation was that our requirements domestically at that time was for 
a, a middle order player that could finish games and had sort of a bit of X factor. So when we released KL from memory, I think we bought Yuvraj. Um, and Yuvraj played an important role for us in the middle order that season. Uh, and we also got Ben Cutting as an overseas middle order finisher. So look, yeah, look, hindsight's a wonderful <laughs> thing, but you know, at the time, I think it was the right decision. Um, but KL also really hit his straps in IPL cricket when he went to Kings Eleven. Yes. Which I think was probably, what, three years after we released him. Because he had that one year where he was injured. You've been in Pakistan with, with the Pakistan team. You've been with the West Indies team, with the Sri Lanka, with uh, Sri Lanka, of course, a Bangladesh team uh, in England, in Australia. What is your ideal World T20 side? I mean, do you look at it and say, look wistfully into the distance with all the space that you have in Perth and Western Australia and say, right, this is the kind of team, wow, I'd go wow with yeah. you. Yeah, so we're talking a team that's playing now. Okay, okay. Okay, so not, not one that's, you know, that, that we've seen over the last 10 years. So if I'm picking a team to play in a tournament in the next three weeks, yeah, I'd go with Warner at the top, Mm. with Rohit Sharma. Yeah. So I've got a left-right hand combination. Coley three. A.B. de Villiers four. Five. This is a difficult one. Yes. I'm, I'm keen to go with Joss Butler. But I recognise, and I'm putting the coach's hat on here, I need a left-hander. So I'm going to go with Nicholas Puran. Okay. I, I need a left-hander in that middle order um, just to give me the balance between left and right so I don't get sabotaged with matchups and what have you. I then got Andre Russell at six, seven Narayan, Stark, Rashid Khan, Bumra, Archer, and my 12th man without a doubt because of his fielding brilliance, Jadeja. That, that, that's quite a sight. But, uh, I know Puran's being talked about very highly as bubbling underneath, but that's a mm. big call on on yep. a young player. Yep. Is he that good? And particularly, particularly over Dhoni. But yeah. that's why I wanted to clarify today. You know, You're is today. It, is it today that Dhoni's a no-brainer? Otherwise, you know, my gosh, you know, I'm his number one fan. I just think, you know, what he's done from a captaincy point of view and from a playing perspective, has been, you know, unbelievable. But I have seen a lot of Puran through my role as Director of Cricket of the CPL. And obviously I've seen him in other franchise cricket outside of IPL. You know, I, I want to also, you know, clarify that I need the left-hander. Yes. No, that's fair enough. You said that. Who's captain so, of that side? Captain. Rohit Sharma, because he's won more IPL trophies. I just wanted to let that <laughs> little breathing space <laughs> around that. <laughs>